everyone, and welcome to The Wellbeing Break, a webinar series on mental well-being. My name is Dennis, and I'm the undergrad well-being champion for the School of Psychology and Clinical Language Sciences of the University of Reading, and I'm super happy to be the host of today's series. So the aim of this webinar is just to invite you to take some time off and just start thinking about your own mental well-being. What are you doing for your well-being? Is there something more that you can do to improve your well-being? Well, with this series, we aim to give you some ideas on things that you can do daily to improve your well-being. I thought that an important week such as Mental Awareness Week could be the perfect time to release our first episode on habits. Our first guest is Dr. Kira McCabe, and I'm super happy to have her as a first guest because she actually helped me develop this series together with the student community group of the School of Psychology of the University of Reading. So, welcome to Dr. Kira McCabe professor and researcher here at the University of Reading. Could you tell us something more about your work? Yeah, so in my work, I'm interested in the symptom of anhedonia. So anhedonia is the second of the two main diagnostic criteria for depression, and is that feeling of um, a lack of interest and pleasure in normal everyday experiences once somebody has become depressed. Um, and I'm interested in how that feeling comes about, what underpins that um, experience, that lack of pleasure. Um, and I'm interested in it both behaviourally, so we use behavioural tasks to assess how you process reward, but but also we look inside the human brain and we use MRI scans to look and see if we can um, see how the brain responds to reward in depression. Well, that sounds very interesting. Thank you for sharing this, especially for a student who might be interested in a clinical psychology pathway. So my first question for today will be from a mental health perspective, what kind of advice will you give for this peculiar situation that we are facing? Yeah, that's a good question. I think a lot of people at the minute are very stressed and anxious, which is natural given um, that we're in a global pandemic. So people are worried about their, their health, their physical health, and also then, of course, their mental health might be taken a toll as well. So what I would suggest, again, is that people um, try and find time every day to engage again with things that they find fun, rewarding, and enjoyable because sometimes when we become very anxious and very stressed then uh, we might mm -hmm. close down a little bit and we actually don't still engage in joy in joyful things um so that would that would be something i would suggest that people try to do well that's a super good advice thank you very much for for sharing so i know that you have recently published an article on why hobbies can improve our mental health and i think this could be extremely important to improve our mental well-being could you please tell us something more about it yeah, so there's been some studies looking at how uh, people who have hobbies, so that's people who do take time out of their schedule to engage with things that they find interesting and rewarding and enjoyable. And these studies show that those type of people actually have lower rates of depression. Um, there's also studies to suggest that possibly hobbies can even prevent some people from going on to experience depression. So um, I wrote this article in relation to my own work, which is, of course, is in, interested in um, the symptom of anhedonia and um, how you might lose interest and pleasure during depression, but um, how hobbies might be one way in which you can kind of re-engage again with something joyful and pleasurable in life that might help you uh, feel a bit better, but also might even prevent you starting to feel worse. And a pandemic is a particularly stressful time, and it's a time as well when people might have maybe more time to re-engage with hobbies that maybe they gave up before or even start new hobbies, things that they've never tried before. Okay, this looks so interesting. So I'm just wondering what actually happens in the brain as, as this is your field. Could you please tell us something more about the research behind it? So we're also interested in how the brain is involved in this process. So we know that the brain um, has a reward system that reacts to pleasurable situations, pleasurable experiences. And for example, neurotransmitters that you may have heard of like dopamine are released when you experience something pleasurable. Yes, so over time, uh, neurotransmitters like dopamine that would fire to the pleasurable response of a reward can start to fire to just the anticipation or 
thinking about receiving a reward um, in the future. Um, and you'll have other neurotransmitters like the opioids that are in involved as well in the pleasurable response. So what we do in our lab is we, we can look inside the brain with an MRI machine and we can try and see if there's different um, parts of the brain activated at these different parts of the reward process and then see if that's different um, depending on your symptoms. So if that's different in people with high depression symptoms compared to low depression symptoms. And the overall goal really of our work is to try and understand these mechanisms behind or that underpin the symptom so that we can develop more effective treatments. So perhaps more effective psychological treatments or even more effective psychopharmacological treatments that can target specific neurotransmitters transmitters. Well, so all this looks very interesting and fascinating as well. Thanks. So thank you again for, for sharing. So now we're just talking about habits. So I'm thinking what actually is a habit and how long does it take to create a habit in our lifestyle? Oh, yeah. So that's a good question. And I'm not sure I have the answer for that. Um, I think everybody's quite different. Um, and what everybody finds pleasurable and rewarding is different. So that's the other thing I think to remember. So when you are um, in your everyday life and things are getting stressful and um, you're maybe not finding much joy and pleasure, um, it doesn't mean that what somebody else is doing is necessarily going to make you feel like um, rewarded and, and finding joy. So I think it's important to try and even as a first step, try and really engage with yourself and try to understand what it is that you enjoy doing. And then once you figure that out, um, even in the beginning, when you take off a hobby, it's not always the easiest thing to do. Um, you might know that in the end that you will feel rewarded from running and exercising. But um, in the beginning, it doesn't feel very rewarding at all. Um, and I think there are the key is that we know if you can push yourself, really push yourself and get yourself somehow motivated to get started, that once you get into the cycle of, let's say it was an exercise or going for a run or going for a long walk, you will start to feel the pleasure associated with that. And then that pleasure in turn will kind of kickstart your motivation. So it's a bit of a cycle. So once you can actually break into the cycle, things do get easier and you will become more motivated. Thank you. Thank you for saying this. I really like what you said about the fact that habits are personal. Because every time we talk about habits, we just think about sports. So going for a run or do some jogging, but actually it's something very personal. I think like a new habit could also be read a new book, a new type of books, or do some journaling, or even do some painting or anything that makes us feel better and could be helpful for well-being. I really like that. So it's very personal. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. It doesn't have to be necessarily physical exercise. I know that obviously physical exercise brings lots of benefits, um, obviously, for your body and even for your mental health. There's lots of studies to show there is positive associations between physical exercise and mental health. And in fact, the NHS prescribes for people who have low levels of depression that they should get out and try and engage in exercise as a treatment for, for low depression. So, so we know that that works. But again, it's not it's not for everybody. Um, I always joke that you never see a happy runner. Um, you never see anybody. <laughs> it, it, it isn't easy to go for a run. It's not. Um, so I think it doesn't really matter what it is you're doing as long as the point is that you're finding some pleasure and joy. And the idea is, again, that why? Why is this good? So if you're doing something pleasurable and rewarding, then you're probably going to be more motivated and interested in doing it again. And if that hobby is something like creative, um, whether you're making things, um, learning more, then in turn, you will also start to feel a sense of achievement and you'll start to maybe increase your self-esteem. It'll give you more confidence. It gives you things to talk about with others, other like-minded people as well. And all of this together, these separate factors come together and it can increase your well-being. Thank you. Thank you again for sharing all these. All these advice are brilliant advice, especially for the peculiar uh, situation that we are now facing. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us today? Um, 
No, I guess just the take home message would be, I think that when things are difficult and, and this happens with students anyway during exam times, but also in a pandemic when people are afraid, sometimes um, they reduce maybe their behaviours and they when they become stressed, they actually um, do less and less. But just to remind people that it's OK to spend time devoted to yourself to still try and find some pleasure, joy and fun in life. And that in turn, in the long term, that could actually protect you and um, maybe prevent you from feeling bad or feeling worse in the future. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time today. It was absolutely inspiring and helpful. I think we are now all going to think about our habits. Are there new habits that we can try to improve our own daily mental well-being? So thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kira McCabe, our lecturer and researcher here at the University of Reading. I highly recommend everyone to have a look at Dr. McCabe's article on why hobbies can improve our mental health. And of course, thank you for everyone for listening today. And I will see you next week with a new well-being webinar on arts, on how arts can improve our well-being. And of course, I will recommend you to have a look at the University of Reading Essential page where you find support and guidance. So you will find different services that the university is offering as well as the Russo page. And I highly recommend you their live tools program that offers a weekly webinars on various topics. So just have a look. It's really worth it. So thank you very much for listening. And I will see you next week with our webinar series, The Wellbeing Break. Thank you.